When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. If you make soda water, what you do is you tend to pour in or put under high pressure, put in lots of carbon dioxide. So this is how we make soda water. We've got our regular water here, and we've got this high pressure device which puts in carbon dioxide. These bubbles are carbon dioxide. And then if we have it standing around, this is how we made it. If we have it standing around, what's going to happen is your bubbles will leave the actual glass and your bubbles are your CO2. So here, this is how we put it in and then this is how it leaves again. And this is obviously carbon dioxide. And the reason why I'm mentioning all this is because the actual experiment that you'll be doing or will have done already says identify data, plan for perform a first investigation to decarbonate soft drinks and gather data to measure the mass changes involved and calculate the volume of gas released at 25 degrees Celsius and 100 kilopascal. So what you have to do is you have to che check how much mass you lose in terms of if you have that standing around for too long and that mass would obviously be to the loss of these carbon dioxide bubbles. And what you then have to do is how much volume that gas would have taken up. The gas that you lost, how much volume that was taken up using the actual gas equation, which we went over in the last video. And we're going to go over again over the, in this video. So the experiment you've done would have been similar to this, wouldn't have been the same, doesn't, didn't have to be the same. You're just looking, so the purpose was just to have some way that we can remove the carbon dioxide. So remove carbon dioxide from soda water or from soft drinks, which is sort of similar to soda water. So remove CO2 from soda water or soft drinks. Now this could have been the first step. You would have weighed salt, in this case about six grams of salt. That's in your first step. In your second step, you weighed a full bottle. So this is a full bottle of soda water. It could be 500 mils. And then you would have a pretty big, pretty big um, beaker, let's say 500 to 1 liter beaker. You would weigh that as well, and you also weigh your stirring rod. So, so far we've just weighed salt, we weighed out 6 grams salt, and we weighed out a stirring rod, a full bottle of soda water or a soft drink, and a 500 ml beaker. And we noted all that down, so we note all those masses down. No down masses. Next step is important step. Here what we do is we're going to pour, so this was our soda water, and what we're doing is we're pouring all of that soda water into the beaker. But we're also adding some salt. So at 6 grams salt, we're also adding that into the actual beaker. And the reason why is because salt, I'll write it down here, salt reduces solubility solubility of carbon dioxide. So what that means is if we put in that salt, the carbon dioxide will leave faster because right now it's dissolved. As soon as we put in the salt, it will just come out of the actual beaker faster. So you're going to see these bubbles, which will be lost. These bubbles are the carbon dioxide. So once you put all that together, once you put all that there, what you're going to do, you're going to wait a couple of, let's say you wait about 30 minutes, wait 30 minutes. Once you've waited out those 30 minutes, what you're going to do is you're going to reweigh everything. So here's you're going to reweigh all your equipment. You're going to reweigh your empty bottle. You're going to reweigh the cap as well. You make sure you the cap of the bottle you have there as well. You're going to reweigh the beaker, which at the moment the beaker has the soda water and the salt. So it has the soda water plus salt. When you're doing you're going to reweigh all of this. And then what you're going to do, you're going to do a quick calculation. You're going to do before minus after to get the change. So before experiment minus after equals change. So let's say, I'm going to give you a random number. Let's say we had these six grams of salt. We had the full bottle, the steering rod, and the 500 ml beaker. Let's say, let's assume this weighed 1506, 1600 grams. So this was before. 
And once we've reweighed all of it, it only weighed, let's say, one five one thousand four hundred ninety-eight grams. And then you would do the calculation and you can see that's a difference of eight grams. That eight grams is change of mass. This is the change of mass. And we said that the change of mass would most likely be due to carbon dioxide that escapes. So that salt, which we added, has made it less soluble. So that means that all of that carbon dioxide has escaped, and that makes up those 8 grams. What we can do next, we can calculate how much moles that would do, because we know that carbon dioxide consists of one carbon molecule and two oxygen molecules. Carbon weighs 12 grams. One oxygen weighs 16, so two will weigh 30 two grams and it's overall that will it would be 44 grams. So we know that one mole weighs 44 grams. We know that we have 8 grams. So then we can use that formula here to get the amount of moles we have. So n is what we want and we have 44 is our molecular weight for carbon dioxide. That's what it has escaped. The carbon dioxide escaped. That's one mole and we know that 8 grams have escaped. So now we can calculate how much moles we actually have. So n equals 88, so it's 8 divided by 44, 0 0.18. So we know that 0 0.18 moles has escaped. Now the actual equation says we need to measure the mass changes. That was the first part. The mass change was 8 grams. And the second part was we have to calculate the volume of gas released. And this is why we did this part. This is why we get the, got the moles. Because now we can do it last. This was the equation we have to use when it comes to volumes. This was the volume equation. This was our number of moles. Number of moles. This was our volume. That this, whatever, how much gas it is, how much it takes up. And this was volume for one liter. So volume per mole. So volume per mole, not per liter. Now we have, okay, we have, we know that we're saying it's saying 25 degrees Celsius. We have, we're going to use this volume for our VM. It's going to be 24.79. We have our N, which we calculated, 0 0.8. So all we have to do is we have to find out how much volume those 0 0.81 moles will take up. So let's put all that into our equation. So we have 0 0.18 equals V, that's what we're looking for, volume. And we know that one mole will take up 24.79 liters. And by rearranging it, so by bringing this over to the other side, what we'll have is 0 0.18 times 24.79 equals our volume. So we put that into our calculator. Put that into our calculator we will get the actual answer, which happens to be 24.79, 4.46, so it's going to be 4.46 liters, 4.46 liters. So now what that means is that the actual escaped carbon dioxide, which was 8 grams, and then we use that formula to calculate that was, that was 0 0.8 moles, so 0 0.8 moles of carbon dioxide have escaped, will take up 4.46 liters in terms of its volume. So for this actual experiment, you should know that you need to be able to remember the experiment you've done. You might not have done this experiment, you might have done a different one, but the main points would be that you should remember how you did it and then how you calculated the actual difference in mass, which would be your carbon dioxide, and then how you use that actual value to get to your volume that that mass occupies and using the, the actual volume equation. Number of moles equals volume divided by molar volume. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.